Hi guys, I'm Matt from Howtech, and today on Technically Speaking, we're going to look at how to set up the Howtech IC7 Color Display Dash using the IC7 Configurator software. I recognize that a lot of you guys will actually be swapping over from your IQ3 Dash to the new Color IC7, and you will notice that the connector on the back is actually the same 36 pin uh, AMP connector. They are pinned differently. So my suggestion is that you take your race pack cable and dash and you set that aside and you use your new IC7 cable, pre-terminated, pre-pinned as it came in the box. We have a new round USB connection on the IC7. That just goes to a standard USB connector. And on the 34 pin connector here, uh, it's pre-terminated with your can high, can low, and power and ground. And you can also put in inputs for things like your indicators, so left indicator, right indicator, park brake, high beam, and parking lights. They all go directly into the back of the dash. There's no setup for those. If they're connected, they'll work when activated. If they're not connected, they stay inactive. So the first thing you need to do is install the latest version of the IC7 configurator software, or ICC for short. The latest version of the ICC software is always available to download for free on our website, howtech.com. Double click the ICC software icon to run the software. Once the software started, you notice there's nothing here. That's because you first need to open an IC7 screen configuration file. In most circumstances, you want to actually modify an existing dash layout that you've got in your dash hardware. And the easiest way to do this is to connect the USB cable from the back of the dash to your PC and click Load from Dash. There's an icon for this on the top ribbon bar of the ICC software. This will load your dash configuration file into the ICC software. If you've never connected to an IC7 dash before, or you just want to create a whole new configuration so you can start from scratch with your new dash or an old dash for whatever reason, you can just click the Load Defaults icon from the top ribbon bar. This will load the default set of Haltech screen layouts. For today, I'm going to download what I've got already set up in my dash and just make a couple of small modifications, then I'll send that configuration back into the dash. So I'll hit load from dash and you see here that my ICC software looks identical to the layout I have on the physical dash. If you look on the left hand side of the software, you can see I've got eight screen layouts loaded into my dash and I've got two alarms that have been set up. What we're going to do in this video is walk through how to change what you see on the screen. How to set up and clear alarms, how to program shift lights, setting up different units, how to set the home screen, and just generally how to navigate your way around the ICC software. We'll work on this first screen in the list for the purpose of this video, but the channel selection is the same regardless of what layout you're viewing. The software is fairly intuitive. To change the channel you want to view, simply click on it and this blue box will appear showing the active element that you're adjusting on the screen. To change the channel you're viewing, click on the channel selected box and select another channel. Here you can also change the channel label and the unit of measurement as well on each individual channel. You can also set the channel up to change color when the displayed value goes above or below a predefined value. In this case, I'll set the channel up to change color when the value goes above 80. And to show you what that looks like, I can scroll this bar along the bottom here, and when the simulated value goes above 80, oh, there you go, the bar turns red. Changing any channel is the same procedure. Click on the element, select the channel you want to display, set your units and your labels, and drag the value simulator back and forth to see what it all looks like. Changing values and display on a dial gauge is the same procedure. Click on the element, select the channel to display, set the color change point, and simulate. One thing you may want to do, however, with the dial gauge is vary your scale based on the channel. In this case, I've got the RPM reading to 8,500. Uh, now I might want to change this to say 9,500 or 10,000. So the place to do that is actually in the channel settings rather than the display element. Now the reason for this is regardless of the gauge I'm using, I always want my RPM to show me values between 0 and say 9,000 RPM. So to do this, I click on the channel settings, I select the channel I want to change and I adjust the minimum and maximum values for that channel. In this case, the engine RPM, I want to set it to something more realistic, let's say 10,000. Now while we're talking about RPM, let's go through how to set up the 14 
programmable LEDs at the top of the dash. If you click on the shift lights in the menu structure, a pop-up box appears with the 14 individual LEDs and their threshold values. You've got the ability to select the colour of each LED. Personally, I kind of like the rainbow effect that's pre-programmed into the default setup, but it all just happens a bit too early for me, so I'm just going to bring each of these thresholds up by 2000 RPM or so, and I'll get the exact same effect, just later in the RPM range. To test that these lights come in when I want them, again, I just use the simulated channel slider, and you can see that the LEDs light up at their predefined RPM points. And finally, the last thing I want to show you is how to set up an alarm. This is actually really easy. Just click on the alarms menu and add alarm. Select the channel on which you'd like the alarm to activate. Let's choose coolant temp for simplicity. This brings up the dash alarm setting box. This is where you set all of the conditions for an alarm to come up on the dash and when and how to clear the alarm. As you can see, you can customize the name of the alarm, the text that's displayed on the screen, the color of both the text and the alarm box. Now, I like to use this feature for warming up the car in the pits where I set a lower temp threshold on the coolant temp with a blue engine below temp warning and then another upper temperature threshold alarm in red when the coolant is over temperature. In this case, I just want to set up the alarm to let me know when the engine's running too hot. To see what the alarm is going to look like on the screen, I select the coolant temp element and I scroll the simulated channel value up over my threshold value, oh, and there you have it, my coolant temp warning. Once you've created the screen layouts that you want to see on your dash, it's time to send them down the USB cable and load them in. The dash unit does need to be powered up for this, so a word of warning there. And finally, I like to save my work, so when one of my mates sees my screen layout and wants the same thing, I can just connect to his dash, load in the save files, and he has it too. So I'll press save as, give my file a name, and now I can share my work with my friends. Well, that's all we have time for at the moment. If you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel or our social media channels, take a minute to do that now. I'm Matt from Haltech, and I'll see you next time.